In this video, we're going to tell you the things that no one tells you about when visiting and traveling through Nepal. We don't want you to get scammed. You go online, it looks like you can... Yeah, you did? Yeah, I did. I got scammed. Figure sitting on a bus for the next six hours of bumpy roads. What better time to tell you what you need to know when planning your trip to Nepal? When you think of Nepal, you think of snow capped mountains, climbing Mount Everest, base camp. What they don't tell you is all the culture that you're going to get along the way the prayer flags, the Buddhist temples, the Hindi temples. Mouths, flavor, and stickiness, amazing nature, the history, the people kindness and generosity. One of the first things you're going to want to do is go to your local bank, get enough Nepali rupee, get it of all denominations. You're going to wind up with a stack of cash this thick that you're going to need to stash in every one of your bags. It's hard to use the ATMs here because half the time they don't have enough money. You get feed every single time you go to the ATM and most places don't accept uh, credit cards. You, a lot of places are gonna charge you American rates, so you're gonna pay way more, so you're gonna have to go through way bigger stacks of cash. Holy currency yeah, is confusing. very confusing, okay? As an American, this is a 1,000 Nepali rupee. As you can see, it's just 9,000 there, okay? It's not 9,000, it's 1,000. If you look on this side, it says 1,000. This is a 100 Nepali rupee. Now, if you look on here, it says 900 and 100. Honestly, before you come to Nepal, like I said, buy the currency at your bank. It is way cheaper to buy it at your bank. It's always the bottom right corner is the actual currency. The value. It is cool money. It is. I mean, it's got the rhino on there. They've got the tiger on there. They've got the elephant on there. Very picturesque, very beautiful. Picturesque. Um, picturesque. Uh, April bought some earrings yesterday at the Tibet uh, refugee camp for 150 rupees, which is the equivalent to like a dollar six. And, and they were all handcrafted. Things are cheap here. You need a lot of rupees to go through the land. Yeah, things are affordable. Although we've been attempted to be hustled. Well, and that's part of it. They're going to try to charge you more for each American thing. prices. We'll have a lot of what things cost, what you should expect in each episode much easier to navigate through Nepal with a SIM card. Make sure to get a local SIM card shortly after arriving to Nepal. Well, there's another tip for you. Yeah, because Wi-Fi is not the greatest. A lot of times it didn't work at our hotels. Make sure that you get a local SIM card. I have my phone on US through T-Mobile. Because I use too much data, it dropped me down to 2G, so then I'm to a snail's pace. 3G. Oh, I thought it was 2G. No. I don't remember 3G being this slow. Like on these drives here, we don't have any service. If you're at the World UNESCO Heritage Site in Kathmandu, you can typically get a private guide inside there, uh, but don't pay any more than 500 uh, Nepali rupees. They're all gonna try to hustle you for 2,000, 3,000 rupees. That is way too much. And 500 rupees is a fair price to them. I know it's not a lot of money to the US, the standard that you should pay is 500 rupees. When traveling to third world countries, you always find that the biggest problem is the plastic. Last night, the rain that they can leave from here, see? The whole, all they will by covering the, the water. We are, which is so the many rocks. There's a flood all the way yeah. coming down yeah. last night. Last yeah. night. Yeah. It was raining hard, too. That's everywhere water bottles, Coke bottles, soda bottles. Everything winds up on the sides of the roads, winds up in the rivers. We've partnered with Dama Bioplastics. 
they have invented a 100% plant-based plastic that they can put in existing injection mold equipment that is used today. You can throw it on the side of the road, home compostable within as little as 180 days without any harmful side effects. There's lots of other different applications they can do. The technology is a new technology and it is something that needs to be brought to mainstream. Dama Bioplastics is a startup company in the biotech industry. It also has the ability to sell carbon credits. So if your business or you're somebody that's looking to invest in carbon credits, check out the link below. That's our chariot for today. So April's got her pee funnel. She's been practicing for this moment. Show them what your pee funnel is. It takes forever though. I'm so slow with it. It's okay, go ahead. There's your, there's your restroom. That's a pee funnel to, to the Asian style toilet. Good luck. She's been worried sick about this moment of having to use an Asian toilet. You have no idea what it's like. I know I don't know what it's like. I'm a man. <laughs> Does that mean they're gonna leave us? Help! 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 Wait! Wait! Is he leaving? Okay. Oh, he's just pulling out. Okay. I was freaking out. No, he's going to go without Oh, okay. He won't. Freaking out that the bus was leaving. It wasn't. Thank God. Y'all ladies are going to want to have a pee funnel because there are a lot of stand-up toilets. You can even call it a toilet. A hole in the ground. My daughter lent me her fanny pack so I could have my wipes and toilet paper and hand sanitizer go along with my pee funnel. It's not so much the scariness of a pee funnel. It's more the challenge and the length of time that it takes. I even practice. Not easy, especially with pants on. Yeah, a couple weeks up to the uh, trip, she had been using it at the house. So definitely practice. More than a couple weeks. Get your Asian style on. Just make sure you have enough time to go. I was just stressed the hell out because our bus was trying to hit the road and I wasn't finished yet. I'm way, way, way out of my comfort zone, so I'm slow. Let's talk about power outages in the fall. This is something that is going to happen to you. It's just a way of life. We've heard two different ways. We don't know what the real answer is. Uh, As to why. A lot of times we keep hearing it's because of the weather. Uh, my guess is I think the power is very expensive and the Nepali government can't afford to, to pay for it. And so they shut it off from time to time to save on money. One person said that. Somebody did tell me that, and I know that I have friends in other countries that this does happen. It hasn't been a real inconvenience to us. I mean, other than the fact you don't have any Wi-Fi, you can't turn your phones, and that, that air condition does stop working, and it does get warm if you're in a, in a hotter place. Yeah, the power went out in Chitwan, and by morning time, we were definitely sweating. When you come to Nepal, you need to be prepared for all different kinds of weather. Well, depending on the regions that you go to, just in the brief time that we've been here, we've been cold and wet and rainy. It's crazy hot. It's stifling, sweating our brains out hot. It's been good that we've had a variety of clothes. It's a mountainous area. The terrain, you could be at 1,000 meters, which is roughly 4,000 feet above sea level to 13,000 feet above sea level. Obviously, those temperature ranges change quite a bit. We brought little gifts for our driver's guides. We just brought them some American chocolate. In Nepal, they don't have a lot of access to a lot of different American-type candies. They do have Snickers, they do have Mars bars. We brought in some Hershey Kisses and then some Symphony bars for like our guides. It's a token of appreciation. Yeah, just a little something. As you can tell, the roads are smooth. He thinks he's so funny. Honestly, I think it is more comfortable in the bus than the private car, though. The, the reason it takes so long to get anywhere in Nepal, but the roads are definitely not the best. Because these roads are not like anything I've ever seen before. It's been a little bit of a back-breaking adventure. <laughs> we don't want you to get scammed. When you go online, it looks like you like can... Like you did? Yeah, I did. I got scammed.
So you do need a visa to get into Nepal. You need to just do the form when you come in. It takes a little bit of time. The computers are older. They are very frustrating. It took us almost an hour to get through. We had crashed our, the computers when we had got there. It definitely needs an upgrade to the Nepali International Airport, and that's why I'm here to tell you, don't do this. You're going to look online, you're going to see, oh, a pre-visa, and you're going to click on it, you're going to charge you something, and then when you get to Nepal, it's no good, you have to get another visa. Just fill out the form on arrival, you just need extra passport photos with, they're supposed to ask you, yeah, they're supposed to ask you for them, but because we had screwed them up so bad with their computer system that they didn't ask us for ours. They normally do ask you for it. And they will not accept Nepali rupees, which I thought Indian. was, no, they would not accept oh. Nepali rupees at the airport. They would only accept US currency. Make sure you have some, some money on you. I'm not really sure why they do that because I had enough Nepali rupees. But the luckily money. I had the cash as well. I'm sure they, they would prefer to have the US dollar over the Nepali rupee. That now let's also talk about Indian rupees. You know, we're, we traveled and landed one day in, in Delhi and then came over to Nepal. And then we're going back to India for 20 something days. I would have gotten currency to bring into India. Nepal does not allow anything over a 100 rupee denomination. And you can't hardly even buy a pack of gum for 100 rupees. <laughs> Let's talk vaccinations. When you come to Nepal, there are some things that you're going to want to get vaccinated on. I know it's a crazy subject now since COVID. I call it getting shots. April, this is her first real third world country, so she didn't have any of the prior shots. Which ones did you get on this one? Tetanus, Hep A and B. You also had the malaria pills. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they are trying to plan their trip to Nepal is they bring too much luggage. You need to get everything down to one carry-on, one personal item. Everywhere has laundry service. It's not cheap, but it's not crazy expensive either. It equivalents to like 10 US dollars. I paid 1700 for pretty much every piece of clothing that we brought with us. We'll put it on the screen how much it is. I honestly forgot. And my cell phone, I'm trying to conserve on that because we've been stuck on this bus for the last six hours. We're not sure when we're going to make it back to Kathmandu. Hopefully we don't miss our flight. Something that you're going to want to do is download WhatsApp. WhatsApp is basically the communication of the world of messaging when you get out of the United States. I know a lot of Americans don't really use WhatsApp. In other countries, it's easier to communicate with the local people through WhatsApp. See that building right there? That's a restaurant. You know what that building has in it? A restaurant. That's the downside to taking the bus. I would really like to go to the restroom right now. Let's talk about how long you need to visit Nepal. This will depend on whether or not you're tracking as to how long you spend in Nepal. If you're doing just the tour sites through Kathmandu and through Pora, you really need two weeks. We were trying to do this trip in eight days. I am so disappointed that I did not give myself three weeks to do Nepal. Two weeks you can do it in. If I come back, I'm doing it for 30 days because I want to do some tracks and definitely want to take my time going through each one of the historical sites where I don't feel like I'm racing through it. Yeah, we've been way too rushed, but part of that is the you know, rain, trying to get the cameras out of the rain. Something else that you're going to want to bring with you is get a Nepali roadmap before you come. It really helps with the ability of knowing where you're at when you're traveling throughout the country. It gives you perspective of how little you have traveled and how long it took you to get there. One of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do as an American is eat with a fork and a knife in Nepal. You'll see all of the travel bloggers and stuff eating with their hands, but here's the problem with that. As Americans, we don't have the bacteria in our stomachs that the people from Nepal have. So they eat with their hands. No bread, no nothing. They just scoop it up, eat it with their hands. The problem is, is you get food underneath your, your fingernails and that bacteria grows. You also cannot drink the water here. You have to have bottled water. You, even if the locals tell you the mountain water is safe 
to drink, it is not safe for you. You do not have the bacteria in your stomach to do that. So this is some of the things that we're doing to prevent us from getting sick here. Because a lot of people that go to Nepal, a lot of people that go to India, as Americans get sick. Because they try to do exactly what the locals do. And he thinks I ramble. Nepal is an adventure. It's not a vacation. It is amazing. The people we've met, the culture that we've learned along the way has been incredible. And the hospitality as well. Friendliness. But that's kind of what makes it. You know, if you're looking to be pampered, this is not for you. It is a little rough around the edges. You know, some of the hotels are definitely not up to... Rustic. Yeah, they're definitely <laughs> rustic. What you get for the reward for coming to Nepal is totally worth it, no matter how many crime fits. All right, tell us what happened. First in India. Want to talk? <laughs> She has, she has done well. But if you're looking for a story that will change your life, then come to Nepal. Yes. If you want to visit Nepal and you have reservations of doing the trip on your own, we have a travel agency. We'd be more than happy to plan this for you. Get you your private guides. Get you taken care of with transportation, so you don't have to worry about each one of your adventures. Feel comfortable and safe that you're you're traveling throughout Nepal. Put you in touch with whatever level of services you would like. Welcome back to another edition of Abel's Admissions. I was just sitting here thinking about what it's like to travel internationally, well, and even nationally, when you have OCD. So I have OCD tendencies. Clean freak. <laughs> that poses a real major challenge, stumbling blocks as we go from place to place. The, uh, one of my big things is all the things that have been touched and all the germs from touching things. It is not easy. And I don't share this with you to complain. I share this with you to hopefully help someone out there that maybe struggles in a similar way to me or is afraid. It requires a lot of affirmations, mantras, breathing. I have to make sure I have boundaries and I take care of myself, which has been challenging on this trip, especially at our pace that we've been keeping up. Make sure I have some calm every day. I have actually had a momentary thought about, you know, germs here, cookies there, touching this, touching that. I usually let it go or I use a wipe or hand sanitizer. I just deal with it because what's the alternative? That acceptance is so important. I've done pretty good, haven't I, Wayne? You have done well. I mean, she has. It don't get me wrong, it has definitely tried my patience. <laughs> well, he tries my patience too. It's just part but, of being in yes, a relationship. And traveling and traveling under stressful difficult. conditions. Traveling is difficult. <laughs> Add OCD and not cleanliness places to her life, and, and it does become a little bit more challenging on my end as well. It's not just about the places, it's about anywhere, wherever I go. It's because of the neuroses in my brain misfiring or something, I don't know. It is very difficult, but it is manageable. It is doable. And as more time passes and you get used to the different ways of doing things in a different country, it becomes just a teensy little bit easier. Sometimes. <laughs> okay, peace out. With the new world of COVID, obviously everybody wants to know if you need to be vaccinated or non-vaccinated to visit Nepal. You can actually go to Nepal as an unvaccinated citizen. The test has to be taken within 72 hours of your arrival into Nepal. For all things on Nepal, check out the playlist card at the end of this video. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button. Share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life.